The dot product is an operation you can define on two vectors. You can define the dot product for vectors in R2, R3, any dimension you like. First, I'll show you the definition for two vectors in R2, each with two components. I'll let V be the vector V1, V2, and W is the vector W1, W2. The dot product is defined in the following way. V dot W, notice I make a very large dot to distinguish it from ordinary multiplication, that's equal to V1 times W1 plus V2 times W2. Now one important thing to note about this operation, when you take the dot product of two vectors, the result is actually a number or a scalar. The result is not another vector. So you can also define a dot product for vectors with any number of components, provided both vectors have the same number. For instance, if v and w are vectors in three-dimensional space, that is, each vector has three components, in this case I'll say vector v has components v1, v2, and v3, vector w has components w1, w2, w3. I can define the dot product, and notice that large dot, as the product of the entries in each position, and you add them all together. v1 times w1, plus v2 times w2, plus v3 times w3. Now it's an interesting way to define a product. You can define a product in all sorts of ways, but we define this particular product because it has a number of useful properties. The first useful property is that algebraically it's very familiar. It satisfies a lot of identities that you might suspect. For example, if you have vector v dot vector w, and then you switch the order, vector w dot with vector v, you get the same answer either way. In other words, the dot product is commutative, which makes sense. It's made up of addition and multiplication, each of which are commutative operations. The dot product has many more properties. I'll just write one more here, which, again, will probably be familiar from algebra. That if you take the vector u dot with a quantity v plus w, you could rewrite that as u dot v, plus u dot w. In other words, the dot product is distributive over addition. You can break it up over addition like you would with normal multiplication. Now, what are some other useful properties? Well, you can use the dot product to calculate things such as length. In order to calculate the length of a vector, well, we're used to using the Pythagorean theorem. But what if I take the dot product of a vector with itself? Well, I multiply together the first two components, v1 times v1, or v1 squared, and the second two, I get v2 squared, and I add them together. Now this looks pretty familiar. If you remember, the formula for the length of a vector is just the square root of that quantity. So if I take the square root of the dot product of a vector with itself, I get its length. Or you'll often see this written as, if you take a vector dot itself, v dot v, that gives you the square of the length. It'll give us a different way to think about dot products and length. Sometimes it's more convenient to think of it in one way rather than the other. And this relationship holds not only for vectors in R2, but vectors in R3 or any dimension you like. You can use the dot product to calculate length. Now another important property of vectors, that is if you have two vectors, there's an angle that those two vectors make. If you think of the vectors as originating from the origin, let's say I have a vector v 
and then shares an initial point with a vector w. Those two vectors have an angle between them. And the question is, what is that angle? Well, you probably remember that we could actually create a triangle with a vector v and the vector w and the vector v minus w as its three sides. Now let's say I want to calculate that angle. Well, there's a relationship between the three sides of a triangle and an angle between two of the sides. To make it a little easier to write down, I'm going to say the length of the side formed by vector v, that length is a, the length of vector w is b, and the length of vector v minus w is c. Now if this was a right triangle, we would have the Pythagorean theorem to work with c squared is a squared plus b squared. But that angle theta might not be a right angle. And in this more general case, there's a more general theorem you can apply, something called the law of cosines. This is true for any angle. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c, cosine theta. It's the law of cosines. And in the case where theta is a right angle, well, in that case, cosine of theta would be zero, and you'd be left with the Pythagorean theorem. So this is a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem, if you will. Now, what we'll do is we'll take the law of cosines, and we'll substitute lengths of vectors. So, for instance, for c squared, I'll substitute the length of vector v minus vector w. I'll also substitute for a and for b, every place they occur. My goal is to hopefully simplify this and get a nice expression for theta. All right, I've substituted. Scroll down and make some more space. Now remember that the square of the length can also be written as the dot product of whatever we're taking the length of with itself. So since I have the length of v minus w squared, I can write that as v minus w dot v minus w. And the same thing when I have the length of v squared and the length of w squared. Now it turns out I'm actually not going to do this everywhere. The second occurrence of the length of v and the length of w, I'll just leave that alone. Okay, now how could I simplify this? Well, we just talked about on the previous page that the dot product is distributive. So I could actually expand this binomial expression. I've got two terms. And after multiplying it out, I get v dot v minus 2 times v dot w plus w dot w. Just simplifying the left-hand side, the right-hand side, I'll just carry that down. And you'll notice some things are the same on the left and the right. Specifically, I can cancel out a v dot v and a w dot w. Now, what do I have left? On the left-hand side, I have 2 times v dot w. And on the right, I have negative 2 times the length of v times the length of w times cosine of theta, the angle between them. I can solve for theta. Cosine of theta, well, if I do some division on both sides, there's a factor of negative 2 that drops out, leaving me with v dot w over the length of v times the length of w. In other words, cosine of theta is given by that expression, which you can calculate directly from the vectors. And if you want to figure out the angle theta, you could do the inverse cosine of that quantity. going to continue to show you what kind of useful information you can get, even if you don't want to know what the angle is, by taking a look at the value of cosine theta, that will give you a little bit of information about how v and w are positioned with respect to each other. So here I'm drawing a graph of the cosine function just from 0 to pi on the theta axis, 
It starts off at 1 and goes down to negative 1. What I'd like to do is draw a table, and if you get these different values for cosine theta, what can you say? For instance, if cosine theta is equal to 1, that means theta is equal to 0, the angle between the vectors is 0, they're pointing in the same direction. If cosine of theta is a number between 0 and 1, a number in the interval from 0 to 1, well, that means the angle is between 0 and pi over 2. In other words, the angle is a cube. Your vectors will look like I have pictured there. If you get 0, in that case, theta must be pi over 2. The angle between your vectors is a right angle. If you have a number between negative 1 and 0 for the cosine, the number is in that interval, then you know your angle between the vectors is obtuse. And finally, if you get negative 1 for your cosine, well, the angle between them is pi radians, or 180 degrees. In other words, your two vectors are pointing in opposite directions. They lie on the same line, but they're pointing in opposite directions. So again, doing this calculation with the dot product and the lengths can tell you a little bit about how the vectors are angled. Finally, projections. Here's the idea. You have a vector v and another vector w. Now sometimes you want to break a vector into two parts. You want to write a vector v as the sum of two vectors, one going in the direction of w and one going in the direction perpendicular to w. If I was to add together these vectors p and q, p plus q, is equal to v. So I'd like to be able to figure out what these vectors are. And it's enough that I find out the vector p, because if I know p, then I could solve for q. q would be equal to v minus p. So how can I determine the vector p? In other words, the projection of v onto w. Think of this as the amount of v that's pointing in the w direction. Well, I know a little bit of information. I know that cosine of theta, by definition of cosine, is equal to the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So I could actually solve for the length of vector p. It's the length of vector v times cosine of theta. But now I need to know cosine of theta. But fortunately, we just figured that out. We can calculate cosine of theta just from the vectors themselves. Theta is also the angle between vector v and vector w. So I could write it as v dot w divided by the length of v times the length of w. So that gives me the cosine of theta. I want to make my dot product really visible as a dot compared to normal multiplication. So that's great. I know the length of the vector p. Now all I need to do to determine the length or to, to determine the vector p itself, I need a unit vector in the direction of p. I'll take the unit vector, then multiply it by the magnitude, and I'll be all set. So the unit vector in that direction, well I know w. w divided by its length is a unit vector. So I'm going to put it all together to get a formula for the vector p. First, I take the length of p, which is this expression right here. The length of p is sometimes taught called the component. Sometimes we'll just use that part. But now, I want to multiply it by the unit vector. So w divided by the length of w. Notice you get a little bit of cancellation. And often you'll see it written in this form. The vector p is equal to v dot w divided by the length of w squared times the vector w. And that's called the projection of the vector v onto w. It's the amount of v pointing in the direction of w. 